بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We stopped at the very very first verse of سورة العلق. We will continue with verse number two. After Allah Azza wa Jalla instructed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to recite in the name of his Lord who created without telling him in the first verse created what? He created, so he created everything. But then Allah Azza wa Jalla specifies خلق الإنسان من علق Created man from a clinging substance. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, by mentioning this particular phase of creation, because you know, a person goes through phases until he becomes a human being living on earth, right? Uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about the phase of the clinging substance to the womb. Uh, and in this Allah Azza wa Jal is telling mankind, I have created you and honored you to bring you from this substance to لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ which is the previous surah. Remember? in the previous surah, and this shows the coherency in the Qur'an, the connection between its surahs, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, I have created you mankind from this clinging substance and brought you to Ahsani Taqweem. And then Allah Azza wa Jal again emphasizes, Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram. Recite and your Lord is the most generous. Akram has, can take two meanings. Akram to mean generous or the most generous, or akram to mean the most noble. And the Arabs are known to call someone who is generous a noble person and vice versa, a noble person for them was someone who is always generous. You see the connection between the two. الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلمه Who taught by the pen taught man that which he knew not. Now, Al-Qalam, by the pen, talking about an unlearned person, right? Now, the importance of knowledge and the spread of knowledge and the deep impact of knowledge on mankind was not as apparent during that time as it is now, for example, right? It, this, this fact wasn't, wasn't clear to people, right? But Allah Azza wa Jal knew its importance. And Allah Azza wa Jal sent this on a man who's unlearned. What is the importance of knowledge for someone who doesn't read and write? He himself doesn't read and write. Again, this is as some of the scholars said, this is uh, evidence. This is showing that it is evidence that he is someone sent by his Lord. This is nothing but a revelation from the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, with this, the first set of verses concludes. Uh, and the rest of the, uh, the surah were, was revealed at a later time. Because it's actually addressing uh, events and things uh, that came after the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ became known in public. The first 
is the very first thing that was ever sent to him وسلم, or revealed to him. But after that are things that happened, clearly as we will see, after his da'wah became known and it became public as well. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kalla inna al insana la yatuga arwaahu stagna inna ila rabbika arruja'a. No, but indeed man transgresses because he sees himself self sufficient. Indeed, to your Lord is the return. You know, an implication of knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator who taught you and honored you in your creation and provided for you, a default implication is to worship him, adhere to his commands, abide by his order and his religion. So Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about those who deviate from this natural reaction of gratitude. The natural reaction of gratitude to someone who does you a favor is to be kind. Right? Now, Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about those who deviate from this natural reaction. Kalla. Nay. Indeed, not. Some people are not going to remain on this path. Some people transgress after Allah Azza wa Jal favored them, blessed them, created them, honored them, provided for them, right? To the extent that they don't admit who the source of this favor or these favors is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Kalla inna al insana la yatra. Arra'ahu stagna. This is a description of the state of some people. Some people, when they become rich, high ranking, strong in body and health, they forget and they feel that they're independent. They don't, they're not in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. As Qarun said, Qala inna ma utituhu ala ilmin indi. Talking about his wealth, I, 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 I earned this. And like the three in the, in the famous narration, the blind and the bold and the leopard, right? When the angel came and gave them wealth and then he came back, two out of three said what? Oh, we've inherited this from our fathers and, and forefathers. This is our wealth. We earned it with our intelligence and hard work. And then forget the source. لا يطغى استغنى Transgresses and feels no need for his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الرُّجْعَةِ is an indirect threat. Okay, you're going to transgress? You're going to deny the source of the favors? You're not going to appreciate and be grateful to your Lord, the Creator who provided you, honored you? The return is to Him. Another uh, very beautiful words said by some of the people of knowledge is that inna ila rabbika ruj'a to your lord is the return they say this means that we need to make everything return to allah in the sense that everything should be sincere for allah azza wa jal so we don't show off we don't do things for people to say because otherwise the first three that will be punished in hell are a mujahid who was martyred, a generous man, a rich man who was generous in spending in charity, and a scholar or another narration said, a reciter of the Quran. As far as people are concerned in this life, these are the best types of people. 
one who performed jihad and was killed for the sake of Allah, one had a lot of money and spent it all for the sake of Allah, poor, needy, orphans, widows, masajid, beautiful, isn't it? And a scholar who's teaching people or a reciter who's teaching people, but they will be the first thrown in, in hell on their faces because they did not do it for the sake of Allah. It was not sincerely done for the sake of Allah Another thing uh, regarding inna ila rabbika ruj'a is that Allah Azzawajal is telling this who transgressed and denied the favors of Allah and felt self-sufficient that all people will return to Allah, good and bad, righteous and evil, those who are grateful and those who transgress. So eventually you're returning to your Lord. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ala ila Allahi tasiru al-umur. Indeed, matters will return to Allah. He starts the creation, and to Him things return. And what's in between is where me and you have to perform. That's the testing phase. And then we will see the result. Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. Ara'ayta alladhi yanha abidan idha salla. Ara'ayta in kana ala al-huda. Aw amara bittaqwa. Have you seen the one who forbids a slave when he prays? Have you seen if he is upon guidance or enjoys righteousness? Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about something that took place at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you see this repeating itself throughout history. How righteous people, how reformers, how those who call to Islam, how those who call people to return to Allah are dealt with. How rebellious people are towards them and aggressive. Allah Azza wa Jal is in this, in this set of verses, these four verses, is describing the tyranny of, of a category of people. And he is uh, addressing it in, a, in an aggressive way against them. Uh, the word ara'ayta uh, in Arabic, which is repeated in the first and the third verse of these four verses, uh, is usually used to indicate that what is going to be mentioned or the topic addressed is something that is uh, rejected and is hideous. What is being done is not accepted, right? So how can it happen? How can someone for, for, forbid someone from praying? Especially when that person is upon guidance and enjoins righteousness. How can this ever happen? And then, أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى Have you seen if he denies and turns away, that person who is forbidding the person who's upon guidance and enjoining righteousness from prayer, from guiding people, from calling people to Allah, whether Muslims and bringing them back to the path or non-Muslims and giving them the light of Islam. أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى If he denies and turns away, meaning in addition to his bad conduct in the beginning, he adds to that denial and turning away from the mission, how will his situation be? أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى Does he not know that Allah sees? And this is a question to me and you when we are acting to remember that Allah Azza wa Jal sees. Allah knows whether you're doing it publicly 
or in your bedroom, in a closet, dark closet in your bedroom, remember, Alam ya'lam anna Allah yara. Does he not know that Allah sees? If you ever think that you can do something in seclusion from Allah and Allah will not see it, then remind yourself with this. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. When you want to do something behind your father, when a woman wants to do something behind her, her, her husband, when an employed person wants to do something behind his boss, alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. When you want to deal in something that is prohibited, and you're hiding it from people, so you don't become disgraced in front of people, and they look down at you, you're a Muslim and you're dealing in haram, so you hide it, alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. When you grab your phone and you have that cover that prevents people from seeing you or seeing your screen and you're trying to hide and see something that you're too embarrassed for people to see or know that you're, you're watching. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. In other words, always be mindful and watchful. And conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal in all your actions. And when one remembers that Allah Azza wa Jal sees, he will remember that there is a consequence to what he's doing. And recompense will be there. You choose the type of recompense you want from Allah. Based on your conduct in this life. Allah is threatening here. No. If he does not desist, we will surely aggressively drag him by his forelock or slap him at the forelock. Now, when the Quraysh were so uh, rebellious against the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and stopped like a solid wall in the face of the mission and faith and the obedience of Muhammad Sallallahu and his followers Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning he was given them indirect threats Inna ila rabbika ruj'a alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara these are indirect threats they're threats but they're not clear open Allah Azza wa Jal in this verse is threatening openly that if he does not stop, if he does not refrain, then action is going to happen. Nasiyatin kadibatin khatia, a lying, sinning forelock, describing those mentioned or threatened in the previous verse. Falyad'uda nadiyah. Let him call his supporters. And this is something to every tyrant. To every transgressor. To everyone who believes that by persecuting, killing, torturing Muslims, he can put an end to Islam. And this is a message to Muslims. To remember that no matter how harsh the situation is, how tough matters are for Muslims, there is a Lord who supports. But it's a phase of test. 
It's a test. So hold on. I've said it before many times and I always repeat it. True victory is to die whilst you are upon your faith. This is the real victory. It's not always in the battlefield. The real victory is when Allah Azza wa Jal takes your soul whilst you are still upon the faith He wants you to be upon. Sadad'u Zabaniyah, we will call the angels of hell those who punish the wicked, the transgressors, the rebellion ones, the rebellious ones, right? Those who deny and feel independent, self-sufficient, are not in need of Allah. We will call these angels for them. Kalla, la tuti'hu. Wasjud, waqtarib. No, do not obey him. He's forbidding worship and righteousness. Do not obey him. Not only not obeying him, go further. Wasjud, prostrate to your Lord. Waqtarib, draw nearer to your Lord. Why? These are means by which you become deserving of the support. You become deserving of support. You become entitled for the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you alone to, vi- to face these transgressors and tyrants. Usjud, prostrate yourself. Why usjud? Why not worship? Because sujood is the most honorable position any slave can be in. We'll take him by his forelock because this is what the arrogant people keep high. For you to be lofty, put it down for your Lord. Humble and humiliate yourself to your Lord. Usjud. Because by usjud you draw nearer. Waqtarib. By performing this act of worship with which you show humbleness and humility, you admit that you're a slave. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. You are his slave. End to beginning. Connection. Usjud to your Lord, to your Creator. Iqtarib from the one who created you. For the, for, for the only one who deserves to be worshipped. Usjud. Iqtarib. Draw near. Things will be solved. Problems will be solved. Hardships will be removed. Anxiety will go away. Bad, a bad, a rebellious wife will become nice. A harsh and aggressive husband will become nice. An undutiful child will become dutiful. A mean boss will become nice. A tight situation will become broad. A gloomy day will become bright. So worship your Lord. By means of worship or by virtue of worship and particularly sujood, you will draw near to Allah. To Allah, You feel that you possess this world. Regardless of who's against you, you feel comfortable because you're supported by the king of the kings, the all-powerful, irresistible subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this, we conclude... سورة العلق We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us from what we say and what we hear اللهم أمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك الشهد والله إلهي إلا أنت استغفرك أتوب إليك